Welcome back. Let's get stuck into building this geometry that we need in order to put our shader code onto, or at least the pixels from our shader onto, because it relies on having vertices so it can color between them. So we're going to go into our GL app folder and create a new Python file called mesh. Okay, so this mesh is going to import Pygame import numpy as np and from open gl.gl import star okay now if you've never coded in OpenGL before this is going to be uh, eye-opening and possibly a bit laborsome but you'll get through it trust me class mesh okay def in it First thing we need are the vertices of our triangles. Okay, so self.vertices equals. Now, we're going to code them like this. We need an opening and closing square bracket. And then we need to have each one within its own brackets or its, its coordinates. So minus 1, minus 1, 0. They'll all be at 0 in the z direction. Then the next one will be minus 1, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 0. That's our first triangle. The next triangle is going to be 1, minus 1, 0. Then minus 1, 1, 0. And finally 1, 1, 0. Okay, so they're our vertices. Now, the next thing we need are UV values. So self.vertex UVs equals two square brackets. These again are within square brackets and you could probably fit all of these on the one line because they're only two dimensional. So we want 0, 0. 0, 1, 1, 0, then 1, 0, 0, 1, and lastly, 1, 1. If you're not familiar with what UV values are or you need a refresher, I'm just inserting the next five minutes of video which talk over that again. If you're familiar, then just skip ahead. Given a polygon, by default when a texture is attached to it, that texture is stretched across the entire surface. What's actually happening is that each of the vertices of the polygon are mapped to points in the texture. These points on the 2D texture that are equivalent to the polygon's vertices are called UVs. They are called UVs as historically the coordinate system used for them, which was an equivalent to the X, Y, Z of 3D space, was UVW. In 2D, the W is superfluous and is usually dropped, though it is still used for internal calculations that you never see. UV values for a texture always range between 0 and 1, with 0, 0 being the bottom left and 1, 1 being the top right. In a 2D plane, the U is equivalent to an X measuring horizontally and the V is equivalent to a Y measuring vertically. UVs are mapped to the vertices of a 3D plane in anti-clockwise order. This is the same mathematical ordering that determines which side of a plane the normal is on. Although we aren't going near the equations for determining this here, it is interesting to note that clockwise vertices will produce a normal facing towards the viewer. To map an entire texture across the surface of a quad, the UVs are listed from the top right anti-clockwise. You'll see this in the code we've already written where the UVs are listed. If you only wanted the upper quarter of the texture to map across the entire quad, then the UVs would have to start halfway across the top of the texture and halfway down. In this case, the UV values would be 0 0.51, 0 0.1, 0, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, 0 0.5. To get meshes to look different but use only a single texture, we must employ a texture atlas. Minecraft provides an excellent example 
all of its block textures are contained within just one image. Instead of providing all the block textures in individual image files, each texture is placed on a grid with all the other textures inside a single file. Given there are 16 by 16 block textures inside the file, the UV beginning and end values can be calculated in steps of 1 divided by 16, or 0 0.0625. To texture a dirt block, the UVs would be as shown here. To change the skin of Minecraft is a matter of simply replacing this texture atlas, ensuring all the respective blocks remain in the same order. Texture atlases are used for all types of games as they conveniently group textures together, but also optimize the rendering process. And because the UVs are always specified between the values of 0 and 1, it doesn't matter what the pixel size of the actual image is. This allows you to swap texture atlases in and out, and as long as the relative positions of the UVs are maintained, the textures will still map to the same polygons. Okay, moving right along with our mesh. Now the mesh has to run a lot of OpenGL stuff, and we need to pass through a program ID. So let's put that up the top. Now this program ID points, or is the reference, I guess, into OpenGL, which has your compiled shader code in it. No, we have not yet compiled the shader code, but when we do, we need to pass the program ID through to the mesh so the mesh can talk to that particular shader code. Okay, so underneath our UV values here, we're gonna go self.program ID equals the passed through program ID. And then we're going to create something called a vertex array object. So self.vao ref, we're taking a reference to it in this case, and we ask OpenGL to create one vertex array with GL gen vertex arrays, and we want one of them. So this is going to give us a reference to where OpenGL is about to let us put our vertices. Okay, so we then do a GL bind vertex array. So you can have multiple vertex arrays, but whenever you want to work with any particular one of them, you then call a bind. Okay, so this is actually kind of like bringing it into the forefront so that anything you do after this involves this vertex array until you call another bind vertex array or you unbind the vertex array which you can also do. So we want to bind our VAO ref that we just created that one. Okay so then we can put our vertices in there. Okay so I'm going to say that the position reference and by position I mean the vertices these are our positions okay that's what the vert knows them as here when they come through okay so back to the mesh so in here the first thing we need to do is generate a buffer to hold them so gl gen buffers and again we want one buffer we then get our position data. Now this position data is that array of vertices just up the top, but we have to use our numpy array to get it into the right format. So we go np array self.vertices and then np.float32 because that's the type of format that GL is requiring these values to come through in. And then finally, we have a position ID, and that's going to equal GL get attribute location self dot program ID, and we're looking for position. Okay, so what have we just done here? We've created a buffer. We have our data ready to put in the buffer. We haven't put it in the buffer yet, but we're also making sure that we know where that buffer is going to end up. Now it's getting the variable, okay, let's call it a variable, the variable called position that is in our shader code. So what is that? We just looked at it a second ago. Verts position, that spelling there 
This is our code looking for that position so that we can put this vertex array in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and load that in. So we have another GL bind buffer, which is now meaning that we're switching to use our particular buffer, which is a GL array buffer position ref. So we've got our reference number that OpenGL wants to know it by and then GL vertex attrib pointer position ID. So this is the pointer into our shader code and this is going to be a three which means it's a vertex it's a vector three okay so this is a pointer that we're getting which will point to things that are of three in length which are gl floats without the s i just pronounced it with float and then we want a false for normalizing those values okay this is if you're working with complex values and you want to actually normalize them but we don't need to do that here and then um, we want a zero for the stride now the stride if you have a mixed data set so say you had the uvs and the vertices in the one long array which you can do then you can have a stride like how far you should skip over the next lot of floats until you get back to the position data again i find doing that a little bit a little bit confusing it's probably more efficient to do it like that but um i just yeah it's easier for you to see if i do it like this and then we have um none in this case for the pointer to it instead we're going to go gl enable vertex attrib array position ID and then GL bind buffer we're getting there <laughs> GL array buffer position ref and then GL buffer data and now we finally put the data into all of that preparation that we've done so we're actually feeding through that data into position in the vertex shader okay so this will be in here gl array buffer position underscore data now remember this is now in a numpy format and we're going to call a ravel on it ravel basically uh flattens the whole array um we've got like three sets inside of another set up there um, this is just going to flatten it for it and then it's a gl static draw and static draw tells opengl that it's going to be a static buffer which means you write into it once and then you draw out of it over and over again which is what we're doing we're not modifying it after we have put in there otherwise you would have a dynamic draw but we don't need that now right so i'm going to leave this video here because it's getting really long and now i've basically covered what you need for getting data matching it up with a variable that's in the vertex shader and loading the data in and it looks like an awful lot of stuff to go to but this is what OpenGL is it's a much lower language than you would expect uh, and sure because you'd want to use this sort of code over and over again every time you're uploading a buffer and we still have to put our UVs into a buffer which means we have to do this again then you know you could write a method that just takes care of this and we do in the course that this is coming from um, we'll get into that and make it a lot simpler i guess down the track but it's good just to learn all of these different steps of making sure you get your data into the right spot right i'm stopping talking now when we come back in the next video we're actually going to put the uvs through now uh you might want to try this as a bit of a challenge between now and the next video is that this is the next thing we're going to do okay a vector two in of vertex uv these are the values that we're going to assign and do all this code again just for the 
vertex UV value. So yeah, give it a go if you like. When we come back, I'll go through all of that. I'll see you in the next video. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website, holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.